Chapter 27 Dizzy followed behind Lyra as he huffed and hurried to camp a lot. Lyra hadn't taken being left behind well. The fact it was for her own good only made it worse. She had taken Slew's sudden departure for the battle scene as a personal insult. This somehow gave her renewed energy and filled her with determination not to leave Trixie Twilight to fight alone after all. Dizzy sighed. Lyra could be so prickly and stubborn sometimes. And so Dizzy humored her and they traveled towards Greengrass's mare together. She guessed that Lyra's bow might come in use and things would be okay if she kept her distance. They marched in silence as they traveled. They would be there in about ten minutes or so. Dizzy would have gotten there by herself sooner thanks to her wings, but she didn't want to leave Lyra behind. Dizzy's ears perked up. She thought she heard yes, she could hear another fight, and it wasn't coming from Greengrass's mare. Lyra! Dizzy's words stopped Lyra cold. What? Lyra asked, annoyed. Dizzy flew up in the air, looked around, and gasped. She could see two figures in the distance. One pink, the other green, fighting in the streets. Pink flashes from Vile's crossbow lit up the night. It didn't seem to be going well. Dizzy and Winslow cheerily tried to pounce on with hoof raised to strike, only for Vinyl to dodge it with little effort and peppered the teeth her with bolts. Vinyl was toying with Lyra cheerily. Dizzy dropped to the ground, frantic. Charlie's in trouble, she explained. She's fighting Vinyl Scratch right now. He is losing badly. What? Lyra exclaimed. We need to help her, Dizzy said. But what about Trixie? Lyra said, conflicted. Trixie will be fine, Dizzy sued. Twilight is there, and those two make a smashing team. So smashing that she wondered there might be something between those two. Thinking about it, they would make a cute couple. I would agree, but I'm afraid Trixie will electrocute me. This was something she would have to look into later. Lyra closed her eyes for a moment to think about it. She opened them aside. You're right. Besides, I have a score to sell with that DJ. Dizzy sighed again inwardly. Lyra and Vinyl had gotten themselves into a feud after the first few moments they met. Those two got along the same as oil and water. Well, whatever. So you wouldn't worry about their pay swapping right now. It's morphin' time! Dizzy cried out. This is serious! Lyra thrust her more forward too. Sides of this! Dizzy rushed over and found where Vinyl and Charlie were fighting. It was a lot around an abandoned steel mill. This is good. Just means he didn't have to hold anything back. Sweet! Vinyl exclaimed as he entered the battle scene. I was hoping making a little noise might attract some attention. This fight's about to get way more awesome. Ha! Lyra said triumphant. I knew you were evil all along. Vinyl stride. Good, evil, I don't believe in such things. Life has taught me anything that it is short. Must have did see surprise. Vinyl just fans in front of them. She went around cursing being unable to find a slippery DJ. The voice behind her made her jump. So, why not have as much fun as possible? Can you keep up with Mercury's speed? Vinyl continued. Dizzy responded by summoning her bow staff, swinging around towards the voice. It did air. Lyra tried and failed to shoot Vinyl. The DJ just moved in between them with little difficulty. Vinyl looked Lyra up and down. Why you even here? You can barely stand. With that old fashioned thing of yours, then, Liz, you might as well throw pebbles at me. Vinyl's right. Lyra's movements were sluggish. It didn't look steady on her hose. But then it didn't stop Lyra from shooting Vinyl out of spite. Vinyl in response ignored her and engaged Charlie, who proved to be a more interesting opponent. Lyra looked about ready to smash her bow to the ground in frustration, but restrained herself. Dizzy gave Lyra a sympathetic look and jumped in to help Charlie. She tried to trip Vinyl with her bow staff in a low sweep, but Vinyl jumped over it and kicked her in the face. Charlie used this as an opportunity to strike Vinyl in the head with a hoof. But in a blur, Vinyl moved her head to avoid it. Vinyl jumped back in between them and fired wildly at Charlie and Dizzy. Dizzy tried to avoid them and she used her staff to help deflect them. But there were too many and she winced in pain, cursing when one clipped her leg. As if her body wasn't sore enough from her previous fight with the Bug Queen, Charlie used her whip to hit them out of the air and got out unscathed. Vinyl used to rush Charlie with a flurry of blows and proceeded to whip her to protect herself and block the unexpected punches. The buses and kicks faded in and out of existence, and so fast that Dizzy couldn't see Vinyl's hoof. But Charlie anticipated them, and did well to block and dodge them. Charlie saw an opening and pretended to punch, only to switch to a knee in Vinyl's face. Nets! Vinyl looked into the air, flipping over and shooting an arc. Dizzy moved in close to Charlie, and the Green Ranger summoned her whip just in time to deflect the bolts. When Vinyl landed, she lost herself right at Dizzy. Did her best to block the onslaught of punches, but could not avoid being hit. Final hit several of her blind spots. 
Chili struck Vile just as he tried to punch Dizzy in the ribs. Vile backed off. The recoil of pain was he sewered her crossbow and shot him several times at close range. And Dizzy did see just how quickly Vile would switch between her crossbow and hose. Dizzy didn't like how Vile was keeping her off balance with her ever changing tactics. Lyra tried to help, but Vile, despite pretending to ignore her, always kept an eye on her to avoid being blindsided by an arrow. Fine! Screw this! Larry yelled in frustration. Time for Plan B. Plan B? Dizzy wondered. What is? Her thoughts were interrupted when Lyra pressed the button and vanished in a blurred flash. Final stopped to kick at Terry and watched Lyra disappear with bewilderment. Terry took a fan of the punch to the face. Hold on a second. She's not going to. Oh, Pony Bear, she is. It didn't take long for a blue, gigantic figure to drop from the sky. It smashed the steel's mill, crushing most of it. It blinded Dizzy with dust from the crash. The figure spread its wings, blowing away most of the dust. Lyra Zora was a graceful blue robotic swan. You know, we don't have many swan zords. It was huge and easily decides an entire building, at least 10 to 80 to 100 hooves long. It looked down at Vile, who stared back, dumbstruck. Really, Lyra? Dizzy fought the air to her face hoof. The same thing, sir. The same points guess what the heck would happen now. Lyra's sword's eyes glowed blue energy and saw a beam of energy directed at Vile. Oh, putty feathers! Vile cursed. So he tried to chip away, but she underestimated the directive range of the beam and blown away the impact of the blast, crashing to the ground with a pained yelp. Dizzy was far enough away to avoid it, but caught Charlie was too hot and painful meeting with the ground. Oops! A bald said Lyra said over his sword speaker. Sorry, Charlie. Thanks, Charlie grumbled. Why did you think it was a good idea to summon your Zord again? Trust me, Lyra said with confidence Dizzy didn't share. You know, to be fair, in Sentai, sometimes they summon the Zords too randomly for one minor monsters. Please see Pope Kenser. The size of the Zord's eye glowed again, and Vile dots it into the debris created by the beam. Vile summoned a crossbow fired at Lyra's Zord with no effect. What's wrong? Lara barked. Aren't you going to summon your Zord to fight mine? Wait, you don't have one, do you? Ha! And you call yourself a ranger. Vile cursed. Don't think this is over. I'll beat this thing somehow. Vile disappeared and reappeared around the Zord, looking for weak spots or an entrance. She stopped on the top of Sice's head. Hallie triumphantly, she smashed her host to what Dizzy guessed was a hat. Dizzy flew out to stop her, but Lyra shook her Zord's head in a violent turkey motion, and Vile flew off. Vile fell to the ground with a painful thud. A size of the beam in Vile's prone form. Vile disappeared just in time to avoid it. It's now clear of the rubble and the shockwave coming her way. Dizzy sighed. She felt so helpless. She was completely lost what to do now. She thought it would be best to keep her distance. Charlie joined her a few blocks away. Oh, by the way, do you guys also see another reason why you don't summon your swords early? That guy... Little people can dodge easy! Poor Trixie, Charlie commented. She'll get played for this, too. She eyed to strikes and Lyra Zora was crying. Yep, Dizzy responded. As if she didn't have enough to worry about. Charlie continued. Yep. Dizzy responded again. Lyra changed to shooting short bursts of vial with their best to dodge. Lyra seemed to have a good instinct where Lyra was planning on moving, but Vile commented to this and kept her moving erratic. Do you think we should try to help her? Yep. Charlie sighed and sat down. Dizzy joined her. Nothing better to do at the moment. Final sporadic movement stopped as he unleashed a bright white light from her horn, making Dizzy wince. When the white dissipated, Sizes looked around bewildered, unable to find its opponent. Dizzy stood out concerned. She had a bad feeling. She rushed towards the fight, Charlie following, confused. Hey! Charlie Final caught ca 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 head to turn in direction. Final's crossbow glowed a torrent of pink energy, and Dizzy cried out warning. Too late, and Final unleashed their ultimate attack. Guide of the Fallen! Final saw a burst of pink energy right into one of eyes, causing the massive sword to holla out an eerie mechanical scream. Collapsed to the ground with an earth-shaking thump. Final fell to the ground, breathing hard and looking exhausted. See, she put everything she had in that one shot. She picked herself a moment later and fastened a hole into the Zord's eye. Well, crap! Dizzy flew forward, opening and saw her Zord, and landed in front of it. Where a man in the eye was a scorched threat. Sparks flew from various pieces of wiring. His eye was pitch blackness. Charlie came up behind her. I hope this thing will work later. Charlie lamented, observing the condition of the Zord around her. It looks broken. Dizzy frowned. She had no idea. The Zords usually fixed themselves and any damage was repaired somehow when they were sent back to their orbital states in space. 
Could it be fixed, though? This might be pets to pets up this time. We'll worry about that later. Dizzy shook her head. Best to concern themselves with defeating Vile for now. They entered. Vile's attack had done a number to the inside of Lyra's sword. It seemed the shot went deep into the sword's head. Dizzy was certain to damage it and come close to the cockpit. But Dizzy couldn't help but get a little worried. They found themselves inside a metal corridor, the same blue of Lyra's armor. The corridor was long and contained many doors. It's not like the inside of her own sword. She knew some of the doors had several sleeping quarters, supply rooms, or even a kitchen. Wow! This is the first time I've ever seen a fic uh, go this deep into a sword's uh, insides. Even though have purpose rooms, now ponies can use their entertainment conversation. So like this place was designed for deep space travel. It confused them why this was here and why any pony even need them. Tissy looked around and found a sign that pointed towards the cockpit. She so pointed towards it and went off the direction. Several corridors on the lift layer, they found themselves on the floor of the cockpit. In the distance, there were sounds of fighting and yelling. They found Lyra and Vile pointing their weapons at each other in a corridor. Lyra tried and failed to hit Vile, who avoided her arrows despite the confining corridor. Oh, there you are, Vile said cheerfully. I didn't want to start this fight without you. Cool robot, by the way. Dizzy did a brief glance at the surroundings. The corridor was not big, and the ceiling was low, so flying is impossible. Vile's movements were restricted. But the three of them fighting together would be awkward. She stuck to her hose. Both staff would only get to the way. Dizzy made the first foot move and jabbed a punch at Vile's face. And moved to a quick sequence of jabs and kicks. Vile dodged all of them, sometimes propelling herself off the wall to do it. Dizzy flinched at a sudden jab to the side of her head. Dizzy took advantage of this and grabbed Vile by the leg, trying to throw her against the wall. It did it on impact. And Vile received an arrow to the chest from Lyra, who saw an opening for the attack. Well, burst through the wall into a large room full of machinery. The Dizzy guest was filed to the air workings of Sizedus. Dizzy could not make any sense of the strange machines, gear, or computers. Dizzy hesitated. She didn't want to damage Lyra's sword any more than was necessary. For his body language, Dizzy could tell Lyra was having similar thoughts. It doesn't matter, Lyra said after a moment. Vile needs to be defeated. Okay, Dizzy said with reluctance. She really jumped in front of the whip with whip and hoof. Even so, we promise not to do too much damage. Vile and her spot caught their hosts together in delight. Behind Vile's mask, Dizzy could tell Vile had a wide grin. Is this just a game to you? Lyra demanded. Sir! Vile responded with no hesitation. Well, not. Lyra ground frustration and released an arrow to avoid with Voy with ease. Dizzy was done. Playtime was over. She was tired of being toyed with. She summoned her staff and unleashed a volley of speeding blows against the other Pink Ranger. Vile dodged, but Dizzy pushed herself harder, increasing her speed and determination. Her opponent was fast, but this doesn't deter Dizzy at all. So your wings to hover in the air and increase her mobility since the room gave her plenty of space to fly around. Vile tried to switch the lab, but Dizzy blocked it with one end of her staff and slipped most of tipped Vile to the other end. Dizzy flew down, trying to deliver a knockdown to Vile and Ranger. Vile rolled out of the way and was back on her hose in a moment. Dizzy used a complicated sequence of swings and twirls with her weapon. Staying unpredictable, pushing forwards. Vile tried to use her speed to avoid him, but speed would only get her so far. Vile was tiring. Dizzy guessed that big attack from earlier must have weakened her. She was running out of stamina. I'm fain to allow Dizzy to catch Vile by surprise. Dizzy hard in the chest and the head. Vile crunched in pain and backed off. Okay, so maybe that wasn't the best idea. Vile summoned her crossbow and fast. Dizzy hovered in the air, closed her eyes, and readied herself. Her special talent was detecting subdue air currents and might be able to use that against the other pink ranger and sense her movements. Dizzy felt her move, much to her surprise. Vile takes her attack towards Charlie, who was watching the fight in silence. Charlie cried out in pain and alarm when Vile peppered her with bolts. Charlie stood up on a sunny host as he declared to DJ. Vile shrugged, You see the bullet. Dizzy turned towards Charlie, who died, and both charged at Vile at the same time. Charlie shot out a flurry of blows while Dizzy used her bow staff. Vile kept a step ahead, but Dizzy could tell the mirror was showing down. Dizzy deflected any bolts sent their way. Vile took over Dizzy's attempt to sweep her hose from her under her. Charlie took a fancy disc with several hose strikes to the chest. Vile stumbled back, grunting in pain. Dizzy and Charlie gave Vile no reprieve and pushed their advantage. Vile tried to get some distance, but Lyra blindsided her with an arrow. Charlie kicked Vile as he tried to get up, able to predict where the Dizzy was, trying to move with super speed. Vile crashed into some machinery, smashing it in pieces. Lyra unleashed more arrows into the prone Vile and almost hit, despite Vile's attempts to avoid him. Vile panted with pain, breaths on one knee. Damn! 
This is what I get for paying around. Final said between breaths. There was time left. Dizzy could see that Final's morpher was developing cracks in it. She knew this fight was almost over. Final growled. She stood up, not ready to back down and vanish. But that she didn't attack Dizzy as he expected. She so appeared behind Lyra, picked up her bow out of her hose and smashed it across Lyra's head. Lyra howled and fell to the ground, unmorphed and not moving. Lyra spelled fans when her armor disappeared. Final stepped over the unconscious Lyra and went to a battle stance facing Ditsy and Charlie. What? you next? Final promised. Final disappeared in the blur again. Ditsy raided her staff, waiting for her opponent's next movement. In the corner of eyes, she saw a blur, stuck out her staff, knocking Final out of her super speed, and crashed it to the ground. Dizzy tried to fly in for a killing blow, but Vile's horn lit up with light, making Dizzy wince in pain and was blinding her for a moment. Dizzy slowed her stab despite being blind, but sick of hesitation was enough for Vile to collapse. Shirley gasped behind her, and Dizzy turned to see Vile's crossbow pointing at the back of Shirley's neck. Shirley tried to turn around back of Vile, but she was too slow. Guy of the Fallen! The attack blasted Shirley towards the roof and crashed right into it. She created a deep dent, and after a moment, Charlie fell unceremoniously to the ground and unmorphed. Final panted hard and stood on unsteady hooves. Two. Final breathed. She stumbled towards Ditsy. Ditsy raised her weapon and fought back her nervousness. Can't have, can't have much air she left, Ditsy pointed out. Final gave a small chuckle. You're right. But on my way out, it's going to be like an explosion. Sir quickly dies out, but at least devastation is awake. Final should seem to brighten for a moment. Pink versus pink? This is an awesome way to end the fight. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah! Uh. Too much pink energy is dangerous. You waited 27 chapters for that joke? Yep! In an instant, Final blurred and disappeared. Tissy closed her eyes and prepared herself for anything ready to sense the other mare with her special talent. She felt Final's approach and blood to punch on her staff. Spiring tends to keep up. She couldn't stop every punch or kick sent her way. She reeled from a hard kick to the chest. The scene of Vinyl was getting slower little by little, draining so much energy. But she was still too fast. It did she fell to her knees after a barrage of punches. She gritted her teeth and stood up only to get knocked to the ground again, under a feint that looked like a kick to her midsection. Vinyl summoned her crossbow and released a volley of bolts to the pawn of Trixie. Ditsy howled in pain and screamed after the next attack knocked her to a wall. Get up! Dizzy screamed to herself, This is it over yet? She run the urge to outright wing from the pain. It was hard, but Dizzy got back to her host. Both staff had to ready. Dizzy knew the fight was lost. Final was still too powerful, but Dizzy refused to give up and called upon images of Dinky to gain strength. She closed her eyes and set herself, and emptied her mind to focus on only a vile sex attack. She perceived Final's movement, but Dizzy wasn't afraid. Dizzy wasn't at peace and ready for whatever came next. Final was moving around her in a confusing pattern. Dizzy couldn't let herself get distracted by it. There. Final pointed her crossbow. Dizzy said from behind. Dizzy was already moving. As Final appeared behind her, Dizzy swung her staff to hit Final square in the chest. As Final got ready to fire. But Dizzy wasn't done. Gills a destruction! The winds finally blew both ranges around. Dizzy howled when she impacted the ground, almost blacking out from the pain. Her attack hit home. The tornado struck Final into itself and flew towards the ceiling and hit so hard it ruptured. Final exploded and fell to the ground like a meteor, creating a deep crater. Dizzy couldn't see Vinyl at the moment, but heard the Mercury Ranger's morpher fall to the ground and crumble to dust. Yes, Dizzy said weakly to herself. Victory dance would be nice, but she felt too tired at the moment. She unmorphed and dust lay there on the ground. She was finally unloading fire with drooping eyelids. Dizzy gave in and found herself in a deep sleep.